In my previous video, I gave the ISA the much coveted God tier status when it comes to building long term wealth. So, in this video, we're going to be going through some of the key ISA basics and how you can be using it to build longer term wealth. This is going to be a video of two halves. The first is going to be talking about why investing is so important and how it can help you to build longer term wealth. And the second half is going to be and therefore why the ISA is so important. So the first question obviously is why should you be investing? You can only trade your time for so many hours in a day. This is kind of limiting when it comes to building your wealth. So the key thing, the fundamental thing that investing does is it puts your money to work for you. The diamond in the rough when it comes to investing is compound interest. Let's just say you take your 10,000 pounds that you had in your savings account and you decide to invest it. And the market on average will return between, you know, it varies, but between seven and 9% every year. And so what that means is that your money will grow and then the next year your money will grow but by your principal amount plus, plus your previous interest. And so what you get is this exponential curve upwards. If you put £150 a month, we take our average growth rate of say 8% and over a time period of 30 years you'll have £225,000 in that account. Pretty great, right? But you will have only made about £54,000 in contributions. The remaining £170,000 will have been the growth in the overall value of investments. And hopefully this diagram will really help to illustrate the importance of the compound interest and the interest that you earn over time. And therefore why investing is better than just saving for retirement. What is the ISA and how, it can, how can it help facilitate your journey? And is it effectively a tax-free wrapper, which you can start to put all your various investments accounts in, but, and this is the key, this is, this is the thing, this is the thing that gives it the God tier status when it comes to its importance when it comes to building longer term wealth. Any investments that you have that sit within an ISA will be exempt from tax. That's capital gains tax, that's income tax, that's dividend tax. And so it just means that if you think about how much of your money you give away every month in tax to not have to pay that on income which is only going to grow over the longer term, key goods, absolutely key goods, like chaos will ensue. But there are a couple of caveats as always with such things. So the first thing is you can contribute up to £20,000 in your allowance every single year. This comes with two important caveats. The first is that your allowance doesn't roll over from prior years, so any unused balances, if you don't use it, you lose it. Cash ISAs. So the cash ISA is like, let's just be real, it's basically a savings account, but it has also simultaneously made the savings account kind of redundant. So one of the things we talked about in our previous video is that now depending on which income tax bracket you fall into, you get a personal savings allowance. So that's money you can earn from a savings account, which won't be taxed. Now, one of the criticisms from the previous video is you still need to have, even though interest rates have gone up, you still need to have a lot of money sitting in a savings account in order to breach those thresholds. So that's the first thing. But what the cash ISA does is it means that any interest that you earn from your cash ISA is exempt from tax right off the bat. When it comes to cash ISAs, I think there is a lot of value in shopping around and just keeping an eye on making sure that you are still meeting all the necessary criteria. Now we get to like the pinnacle, the peak, the one, the only, the stocks and shares ISA. In my view, one of the most important tools when it comes to building longer term financial freedom. And that is, again, for two main reasons. The first is it allows you to invest. And as we talked about earlier, the importance of investing in order to secure your financial future really cannot be overstated. And all the gains and all the income and all the dividends that you get from investing tax free. Boom. Like just end, end of the line. Cut, cut, cut everything you need right there. And so what does the stocks and shares ISA do? Well, basically it gives you the opportunity to invest in stocks and shares of individual companies. You can also invest in uh, index funds or ETFs, which are a collection of stocks and shares of companies that sit within a single tradable security. Or you can trade in bonds, which are basically loans that have been made to governments around the world. Next is gonna be the Lifetime ISA. So the Lifetime ISA was launched in 2017 to help younger people um, basically save for their first home or save for retirement and basically the government will guarantee a 25% top up of all the money that you invest. You have the cash lifetime ISA which works just like a cash ISA including the government top up and then you have a stocks and shares lifetime ISA again kind of combining the two but it ends up in my view being kind of not very useful. And then we have the junior ISA. Now you can open it for your children from as soon as they're born and you can make contributions of up to £9,000 a year. These contributions fall outside of your £20,000 a year ISA limit that applies to pretty much all the other ISAs except for one. And what this basically just means is you, you can invest on behalf of your kids and you know it just basically means you can invest in stocks and shares and as the value of that pot grows they won't pay any income or any capital gains tax on that money. Now they can take control of their junior ISA from the age of 16 and from the age of 18 
it will completely transfer over to them. It will just convert into a fully fledged stocks and shares ISA. If you put money into a junior ISA, then basically that money cannot be accessed by you or the child until they turn 18. So people, the, gen the criticism is generally, if you're not maxing out your own personal ISA limit, then it's not worth having a junior ISA. Finally, we have the British ISA. Now, I have been very critical of the British ISA in my other videos. I have got a bit of grief for it in the comments, but you know, and basically the British ISA means that even if you top your £20,000 ISA uh, allowance, you can invest an additional £5,000 into British companies. My main criticism of it is that so few people even have a stocks and shares ISA. I think it's 3% of UK adults have a stocks and shares ISA and less than half of those people maximise their £20,000 limit. So the idea that people need another £5,000 is just kind of a bit silly. So that's my main criticism. Make sure you subscribe because in our next video we're going to be going through some of our top ISA providers from the god tier Warren Buffett style stuff all the way down to the, I don't know, like Bernie Madoff. Thanks very much for watching. Peace.